Okay, so what are some of the advantages to that? Well, I think the first one is pretty obvious from the demo, is that you don't need wall power to run the pedal board. Now you certainly can do if you want to, but you don't need it. So this means you don't have to search around for available outlets, you don't have to run a long power cable from the back of the stage to your pedal board at the front of the stage. Now not only is this more convenient, it also means that you're not running noisy AC power cables alongside the signal cables from the front to the back of the stage. And if you're running a wireless system, for example, all you're going to do is just run a single output cable from your pedal board back to your amp. You're not running AC power cables alongside the signal cables and causing induced noise. The other advantage is you completely get rid of any possibility of harm from ground loops. Why is that the case? Well, it's because the hum that you get from ground loops is caused by the zero volt reference of different ground points being different. So when I have one thing connected to a ground at one point and one connected to a ground at another, if there's some differential there, then that gives us the possibility of harm from a ground loop. The 529, when it's being powered from a battery, isn't connected to ground, so there is zero possibility of any harm from ground loops. Now I have seen one or two other battery type solutions which instead of being something like this are more like a lithium ion battery with one or two 9 volt outputs and the idea there is that you plug something into there and then you run a daisy chain uh, to your different pedals. Um, now under some circumstances this can be okay but I think we're all familiar with the circumstance where you connect one particularly noisy pedal to a power outlet and then you daisy chain it with another and that noise gets propagated through all the devices. And this is why isolated outputs are very popular with uh, pedal board power supplies. All of these are isolated. Now since my pedals are running DC and since I'm using my 529 just to convert between the different voltages, I'm getting 5 volt in from my USB supply and 9 volt out here, but it's all DC. There's no AC at any point, so I don't have any um, AC to DC transformers, I don't have any rectifiers, I don't have any of those components that can cause electromagnetic interference and noise that's induced by proximity. I think plenty of us are familiar with putting a sensitive device like a fuzz pedal or a wire pedal on top of a power supply and the, um, the transformer inducing a lot of noise in that device. They don't exist in this because it's all DC. Okay, so right there, the 529 is just a better solution. If you want to run it from the wall, you can. While running it from a battery gives you no ground loops, no induced noise from AC cables, no EMI from power transformers and rectifiers. It's just gonna be a more quiet power supply. And our tests that we've done here have proved that to be the case. It's also much smaller and lighter and easier to fit on a small pedal board than other power supplies. So even with just those things, this should make this the first choice pedal board power supply. But that's not even it, right? What if five outputs is not enough? Okay? What about 10? Okay, well that's pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna take two 529s to give me 10 outputs and then I'm gonna use a USB cable to just link the two together and now I'm going to drive the two 529s from a single USB battery on the input. The total output from a single um, 529 is um, 2.4 amps, and that's almost double the output of a pedal train spark, for example. And the 529 is smaller, lighter, it costs less, and it runs on a battery. There are a couple of mission verified solutions. The first is this, this is the APC battery pack that mission offers with the 529. This is a 10,000 milliamp hour battery and it will, uh, depends on the pedal board that you're using, but for example something like this one back here, this, will, this battery will power this pedal board for about 16 hours. It has two outputs on the top so you can drive a 529 and charge another device simultaneously like an iPhone or iPad, similar device. 
has a battery status indicator and then a switch on the side. It's also very slim so it will fit underneath the pedal board including the pedal train nano alongside the uh, 529. This is the Griffin Survivor. This is a ruggedized battery pack so this is really nice because it's drop resistant and it is water resistant and it has this uh, really nice flashlight feature on it that you can use for indicating uh, different things and checking stuff out on stage.